Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to be taking a look at Macargo. Ladies and gentlemen, Quad Macargo is back. I know! I'm a little bit excited about this. You see, Quad Macargo was a deck that came around when we had Macargo in Celestial Storm. And then far more importantly, Macargo GX in Lost Thunder. And the pair of them together made a proper job quad Macargo deck. And then we didn't hear about this for a very, very long time. Well, it seems like it's coming back with a vengeance. So much so that I'm going to be dropping four deck lists on you at the end of this video. Because I care, ladies and gentlemen. Because I care. Also, shout out to the lovely Code64X and the lovely TalonyteX for hooking us up with Japanese deck lists. Although it is Code64X specifically who brought us this one. So let's remind ourselves about the Macargo fun time, shall we? You see, we've got Macargo GX. Macargo GX is your main attacker here. The main attack, Lava Flow, two fire, one colorless energy minimum. Discard any amount of basic energy from this Pokemon. You do 50 damage base, plus 50 more for each card that you discarded in this way. Oh, cool. So you just discard a whole bunch of energy, pile energy on, discard energy, smash. But you've also got the ability Crushing Charge. Once during your turn, you may discard the top card of your deck. But if it is a basic energy card, then instead you attach it to one of your Pokemon. Well, that sounds pretty gosh darn good. And we actually shouldn't sleep on the fact that there is a really nice GX attack here. For one fire energy, you just discard the top five cards of your opponent's deck. And there's going to be plenty of times where that will just win you the game. Now, it's not actually showing up in any of the deck lists here. If I were playing this deck, I would be taking in a single copy of Belelba and Bryson, man, which combined with Macargo GX's GX attack actually mills eight cards in one go. I'm not saying that will win you the game or anything silly like that, but I am saying that milling eight cards in one go can be pretty devastating for your opponent. So you need to get energy on, and you've got a big attack, and you've got an ability that accelerates energy, but we also need the ability of the Macargo from Celestial Storm. Smooth over. Once during your turn before you attack, you may search your deck for any card and put it on top of your deck. So essentially, you use Macargo from Celestial Storm to guarantee there's a fire energy on top of your deck, and then use Macargo GX to smash. The problem is, even though you could theoretically play four Macargo and four Macargo GX, you can still only play four Slugma, though you can add in a Ditto Prism Star, and you absolutely should. And the deck list, I believe they all do. They really should. But you're still kind of running out and they're all stage twos and they're kind of tripping over each other and it gets a little bit awkward. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we have got the new Oranguru. And this really does make a gigantic difference. You see, the new Oranguru, the one from Sword and Shield, and this has been popping up in a lot of decks we've been looking at, has a rather phenomenal ability, whereby, once during your turn, you may swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. So as long as you've got a fire energy in hand, you can put it on top of your deck after drawing a card. So you gain a one card advantage, you're essentially drawing a card, while guaranteeing that you hit with the ability on Macargo. And now, all of a sudden, you still play the Macargo from Celestial Storm, of course you do. But now, all of a sudden, a little bit of the... A little bit of pressure has been taken off here. And that helps massively. I mean, something as simple as having two Oranguru on the bench. And then you play a Fire Crystal. Now, Fire Crystal lets you pick up three basic Fire Energy from the discard pile and put them into your hand. And then you use the ability on the first Oranguru. Essentially draw a card, guarantee the ability hits from Macargo. And then use a second Oranguru, and all of a sudden you're using both Macargo GX abilities, and they're both guaranteed to hit. That's not to say you cannot also play a Macargo from Celestial Storm with a third Macargo GX. 
but it opens up way more options. It makes you less reliable on the Macargo from Celestial Storm, and believe me, that's huge. But the other Pokemon we play here is Torkoal V. You see, Torkoal V is just good. Torkoal V is a really nice attacker. For free energy, you do 90 damage, and you reveal the top card of your deck, and if it is a fire energy, then you do 180 rather than just doing 90. Well, with either Makago from Celestial Storm or your Oranguru, you're hitting it. I should mention Torko, you discard the top card of your deck, you don't just reveal it. My apologies on that one. The point is, you're just hitting 180 for free energy, which you can't do with Makago. And there is a second attack here that does 120 and discards two energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. That could be kind of useful. That could be some really good milling. You don't have to. It's not absolutely vital. But it's still a nice attack. If you're ever in a situation where you go, oh, if I get rid of a couple of energy from my opponent, I can win this game. Yeah, Torko V's got your back. Now, in terms of other Pokemon, we, we see a couple of techs here and there. We'll go through them in a second. The ones we tend to see in every deck are... Well, there isn't really all that much consistency, to be honest. We do see the Dene GX in the majority of the decks because you get to discard your hand and draw six cards. It's phenomenal for early game consistency. And we do tend to see a fair bit of Mewtwo and Mew here because you can use Mewtwo and Mew to copy Makargo's attack when it's in the discard pile. So that you can essentially attack with that, rather than having to rely on a stage 1. But remember, if you're using Mew to a Mew to copy Makargo, you get the attack, but you still lose the ability. Outside of that, you might choose to play Volcanion, just to get some nice energy going in the early game. As well as having a decent non-GX attacker. 110 for 2 energy isn't exactly terrible. You may wish to play Heatran. It's a GX, but it comes in out of nowhere, moves all the energy over to it, and then hits either 130 for free energy, or it hits 50 damage for each energy attached to it. So you can essentially pile energy on, and then smash big with your GX attack. You may wish to play Reshiram and Charizard. It's a phenomenal attacker. We know that by now. Or you may wish to play Cramorant V. Now, the first attack is fine. One colorless energy. Search your deck for two cards put them into your hand but what we're really looking at here is the second attack free colorless energy discard all your energy and then do 160 to one of your opponent's pokemon generally speaking here we're going after dedene or jirachi gx because they've got 160 hp and give up two prizes but really any important pokemon or multiple prize pokemon which is on the verge of being ko'd i.e. 160 HP remaining or less, will go down very nicely here indeed. And of course, you may wish to play Mew to protect your bench. You may wish to play Ninetales. I mean, look, you're playing Fire Energy anyway. Ninetales discards two from your hand and then is automatic gusting. That sounds pretty good to me. And of course, with all this discarding with Ninetales and Torkoal and all of that, Victini Prism Star. Victini Prism Star for 2 energy does 20 damage for each basic energy in your discard pile. Then you shuffle them all back into your deck. Incidentally, in the mid to late game, this means that you're going to be able to fire off Makargo's ability even more times. Which is lovely. Obviously, in terms of energy, we're just playing basic fire. For all of the cards we're using, really rely on basic fire. Now, in terms of trainers, I'm not going to exhaustively go through every trainer card in every deck, but needless to say, we're playing the fire tricks here. Welder is absolutely huge, attached to fire energy, draw three cards, and yeah, I know you've got Macargo GX's ability, but make no mistake about it, Welder is still extremely important. We're obviously playing Giant Half to search the fire energy out of your deck, and the aforementioned fire crystal to get it back from your discard pile. And we're playing one copy of Heat Factory Prism Star, because you get to discard a fire energy from your hand and draw three cards. That's pretty big. You may also wish to play Fiery Flint to search out energy from your deck, if you're in the mood. One thing that we do see in a lot of these decks, which we don't see in many decks, is Pokenav. 
Yeah, Pokenav actually sees like a weirdly large amount of play in these decks, especially considering Pokenav as a whole just really doesn't see a huge amount of play. Now, Pokenav lets you look at the top three cards of your deck, find a Pokemon or energy, and put it into your hand. Now, bearing in mind, if you use Macargo to put a Pokemon on top of your deck, Pokenav will find it. And it just adds consistency. It's nice for essentially drawing what you put on top with Macargo, but it's also extra consistency. And it shouldn't surprise you to know that both Quick Ball and Evolution Incense become phenomenal cards here, because, of course, well, they search out your Pokemon. This is what is making so many different cards viable nowadays, it's, yeah, well, we're going to be talking about these a lot until they rotate, frankly, ladies and gentlemen. They're pretty gosh darned important. Outside of that, we just see a lot of the cards we would usually expect to see in such a deck. The list that aren't playing Ninetales do tend to play Custom Catcher for the whole gusting thing. You should be able to one-hit KO anything here, but you are discarding a bunch of energy when you do. Nice to be able to take the big KOs. And Marnie actually makes a big appearance here. It's the one whereby both players shuffle their hands and put them on bottom of their deck. You draw five, your opponent draws four. It's basically like a judge, but you won't redraw what you had in your hand, and you get one extra card. Here is list number one. List number one just goes with your Vulcanian and your Mewtwo and Mew. Obviously, what the one Torkoal, and you've got your four copies of Custom Catcher. List number two chooses to play two Torkoal and two Oranguru, and it only actually plays one Makago from Celestial Storm because of the presence of Oranguru. List number three plays Heatran and Reshiram and Charizard and Cramorant V to make things a little bit different, plus there's one copy of Giant Charm there to give one of your Pokemon an extra 30 HP. And list number four plays the Ninetales line and also plays Volcanion and Victini. How cool. It's a fun deck. It's a deck that was really good and went away and now it's back and I, for one, am somewhat delighted. But I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv. Slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but do have awesome. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.